perfectly splinted. Okay, that might work. My, 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 my work. Hey everyone, today I would like to show you a song I've been working on for a while. Uh, I think I first wrote this in April or May. I don't remember, to be honest, um, because I first record my ideas on my phone and since I changed phones and didn't back up stuff properly, I lost the original file. But the first time I touched this inside Logic was July. Yeah, life has been messy in 2021. <laughs> but there are also lots of tinkering and the thing is that music, music production course I'm doing, the instructor is super nice. And so we have this thing called Feedback Fridays where we send our songs and then Nathan does a Facebook Live where he listens to all of them and people talk in the chat and he gives some really good feedback. My plan is to talk a bit about the song and show how it was before the feedback, what was the feedback I received, and then the version after the feedback and what changes I implemented. Background on how I created this song. As I said before, this last year was messy. I think inconsistency would be the word to define it. I never knew what I was going to get in the next week. You sum that with a pandemic, living alone, working from home, having no family around. Family living, living in Brazil actually, where the situation has been terrible and not seeing friends. Some uncertainty is expected in life. I love these lyrics from a Bruce Dickinson song that say nothing lasts forever but the certainty of change. I think this is very true. The only certain thing in life is that we're going to die. Everything else can change but as humans I think we have a need for a minimum level of consistency in order to feel safe, happy and function. And I remember catching myself thinking I wish my life was a bit more uneventful. I wish there were no unpleasant surprises or drama or chaos coming my way, at least for a week. It's funny because if you ask my parents or my lifelong friends to talk about me, usually the first things they'll say are she's independent, strong, brave, she's a badass. And I think it's a misconception people have because I always did everything on my own and stood up for what I believed, even if that meant getting into fights. Um, but the reason for that was first, I was terrible at asking for help. And I know now this is a part of my neurodivergency, but also I had these beliefs that needing other people was shameful and that asking for help would make me a burden or that people would demand something from me if they helped. That's probably a bit of toxic anime culture as well. I mean, as a kid, I watched a lot of tokusatsu. So there was this feeling of, I have to be the hero and save everyone and fix everything. <laughs> and as a teenager, I watched a lot of things like Berserk for those of you who are not familiar, it's an anime about this loner with a big sword who says stuff like those who cannot fight for themselves don't deserve to be alive. Hair on my mouth. I don't know if this is the quote in English, 
I'm translating from what I saw in Portuguese. I watched it in Portuguese. And I thank the universe for my psychologist who's been helping me to work to eliminate these unhelpful thoughts because I have never been so scared as this year, honestly. I felt like I wanted to go back to being a kid and to be cared for. You know, when a kid is very overwhelmed and they start to cry and say, I want my mom, that's how I felt. And that's the story at, of why at first I named this song Uneventful. It was a lullaby I wrote for myself in my bedroom. I imagined this really peaceful thing, just voice and piano. Sometime after putting this into logic, whenever I heard the melody, it made me think about that opening scene from when Marnie was there and the song that's in the movie called Fine on the Outside. If you never watched when Marnie was there, it's a beautiful uh, animation from Studio Ghibli. Uh, my friends and I covered the song from it. I'll put, I'll put a card link somewhere. <laughs> Uh, and it was the first movie that made me cry in the first five, five minutes into it. It hit, hits the feels. So the first version of this only had the voice melody and piano. And it was about half minute long. Tinker, tinker, tinker. I won't show the alternatives that are just tinkering, no point, and I'm not proud of my tinkering. Finally, on version 6, I decided to add a cello. I love cellos. Uh, and a clarinet solo. This is the first arrangement I wrote 100% on my own that changes both BPM and time signature, not only once but twice, so it was a challenge for me. One alternative per month, that's sad, <laughs> that's really sad. Um, in fairness, I did some other music stuff in the meantime, but still. Number seven, here came the violins. And what I even forgot, I tried to uh, add choirs to this at some point. Number eight, a month later, um, this was a very decisive moment for this song. Some more cello stuff. Change the violins and this piano. Playing the end of this song was very special to me. And the song now has about three minutes and a half. Version 9 had a flute. Spoiler alert, it 
did not make it to the final version. I wasn't 100% happy about it. Um, I'll explain my reasons better later. Okay, so number 10 were vocals, 11 were verb, 12 cut. Alright, um, the cuts are something that Nathan teaches in one of his videos, basically to cut the silences in between and add some crossfade. I'm not sure I did this right, but I tried. Um, 13, I finally tuned this thing, uh, piano. This is a funny one, but I sent this to my friend and the first thing he said was find another piano, because you know, otherwise I'm sure Nathan will say something, he's not a big fan of Logic stock instruments. And the other thing he said was to change the velocity of the bass notes a bit, to make it sound more delicate. Um, I don't know if it's me who used this wrong somehow, but to be honest I didn't notice much difference between this Shine piano sound and the Logic one. Mix prep, bouncing MIDI to audio, tinkering, 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 lord help me. This is the version I sent to Nathan that I'll play to you now and then I'll talk about the feedback I received, the changes I did, etc. One note I wanted to make is by the time I had this version it didn't feel like an uneventful song anymore, um, particularly after I wrote that end on version 8. So uh, the name didn't feel right, but when I listened, I thought mm, I have calm, sadness, longing, change, release. That piano at the end really makes me think of release. And I probably was influenced a bit by the name of the project I had in front of me, UNV. So uh, I went with universe universe felt right.
So the feedback I received was that um, number one, at 1 18 seconds, more things should be happening. Number two, need to check the quantize, piano out of tempo, quantize with 80% strength. Um, number three, use the pedal on piano, especially on arpeggios. Number four, notch out two to 300 hertz from the vocals. Number five, make the orchestra at the end bigger, add contrabass, violence. And number six, re-record the clarinet with an expression palette and make sure I'm not on legato expression to do the short notes I think he meant. The first thing I did was number two. I quantized the piano. Um, I had to check all the vocals after that because I was afraid I would need to move them slightly after this quantize. I had to move a bit actually. Then I did a piano with uh, sustain number three. I don't have a pedal. I don't even know how to use a pedal. I know it's, it's graceful. Um, so I just followed one of Nathan's videos on how to add sustain automation to simulate that. I had to add all these dots manually. And to be honest, I didn't notice a lot of difference after doing this but I don't trust my ears. Double bass, what's that? Uh, I think it was one of the attempts of having a bigger end. And my God, the mess of this project, please ignore it. I will try to be more organized in the next turn. Yes, this has a double bass. I wasn't crazy about it and actually making the orchestra bigger at the end number four was one of the changes i didn't go with because i never thought of this song being played by an entire orchestra in the first place and i remember nathan saying in the facebook live you know whenever you write for orchestra you need to think of all the instruments they wouldn't be sitting there doing nothing the entire song and I you know that's why you need violas and double bass and I get that but again this wasn't a song for orchestra in my head I grew up listening to a lot of melodic metal and gothic metal so for me it's normal to have a song that only has um, voice and piano or guitar and then a couple of cellos and violins here and there in studio but not a full orchestra for me that's not weird at all um, and that's the same reason why i didn't keep number one that was adding more things at 118 I tried but I didn't like it maybe it's the style of the song maybe it's because I'm a minimalist I don't like many things happening at the same time um, or because in my head this was supposed to be very simple like a lullaby I just felt like it was too much different articulation on the short notes yes that did not work um, That wasn't the sound I was looking for uh, at all, but sure, look, um, I did some research and watched the, some videos of people explaining and playing clarinet and I must say the way I wrote before, it wasn't anything impossible to play 
it's not something that wouldn't be doable in real life. I did re-record this clarinet using the expression palette. Um, this is what it looks like, in case you're curious. Uh, I have some funny stories about my purchase of this. I'll, I'll leave it off camera. I'm still getting used to it, um, but so far I like it. I ended up using it for the violins as well. Really cool. This delay one was me trying some delays on the vocals, but I didn't like what I did. Uh, I still have a long way to go uh, on learning about mixing and how to use effects properly. So uh, the version I actually went with is this extra violin one that doesn't have extra violins because I muted them, so it's fake news. Um, and that's pretty much it. Again, I think it's a very subtle difference, but I'll play this version for you. One comment as well I would like to make is that a lot of people shit on Logic stock instruments, but I wrote a song in early February uh, and I used some staccato strings there and I like that sound better than I like the Spitfire Labs. Um, I might go back to those stock strings on my next one, I'm sorry.
that's the version I probably go with and I'll be posting separately I hope you enjoy it on this breakdown at least the feedback you gave me in the previous vlogs was that you did so I made an effort to do more I'm quite proud of this song it's not perfect but I'm happy with the result I'm thinking of maybe even sending this to one of my idols <laughs> she'll probably not listen or even reply to me I don't have a good history <laughs> with my idols actually I lie <laughs> I had Epica share my videos not only once but twice once in 2010 and the other in 2018 and Akuna appears in a YouTube video watching my video that was super cool <laughs> but some other artists I covered never noticed me <laughs> that's it thank you so much for watching if I don't post anything more this year I hope you all have a lovely Christmas and New Year's Eve stay strong new year new me new variant uh, and see you in the next video bye